Hi everyone, I'm Hales and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you everything that I made on my sewing machine in 2020. There are quite a lot of things to show you. There's over 50. So to avoid this video being too long and boring, all the in-depth details about in the individual items will be down in the description box below because most of these things, if not all of them, have been included at some point in separate videos or roundups or pattern reviews or that kind of thing. So all the all the details will be down below. So with that in mind, let's get started. And I do have a notebook here with everything written down because it was too much for me to remember off the top of my head. So I made three items in January and I started off with the Selger pattern, Selger Knot Tea by Named Patterns. And this is in a viscose jersey and it's quite a straightforward. I think I did maybe shorten it by about an inch. It seems such a lot, January just seems such a long time ago. But that was the first make. Then, I'm oh, sorry, I'm going to have to just look down. Then I went into Simplicity 8529, which was a collaboration with Soho House 7. So it's a variation on their toaster sweater. I did find that the collar didn't sit right and it was too short. And it, I made that one in a Ponte Roma fabric. The last one for January was the Anna Allen button up skirt. And I had good ideas for this. I thought it would be a good staple, but when I made it, I don't know, I had different size buttons. I changed the bottom size of the button placket. It just ended up really big around the waist, which incidentally at the end of the year fits my waist. So that just shows what kind of year we've had this year. But so I do still have it. Um, but yeah, button up skirts, I always have issues and you'll see there's another issue later on in the year when I made a button up skirt as well. But that was January. February, I launched into making a coat for the first time and this is the wool coat and it was Butterick 6385 and I chose the option with the, the funnel colour and I've seen quite a few people have picked up on this pattern as well and they've made it. And I tried to include tailoring techniques but I wasn't happy with the shoulder. I did a full bicep adjustment and there was just too much fabric and I couldn't gather it because of, I'd done like various, like a sleeve head and with the wool fabric it wouldn't gather and I'm not happy the way it sits. And I haven't had that one professionally pressed so it doesn't sit that great. Um, and by the time I finished it, which is towards the end of February, so it took me about three weeks, the weather warmed up and spring had arrived and it was too hot to wear it. So I haven't actually, other than perhaps once to the shops, I haven't had the opportunity to wear it, but that was my first coat and I learned loads from the techniques of that. So I was quite pleased with the process. Um, and that was that. In March, I made nothing. I've checked here, nothing. Didn't make a thing. Now, lockdown hadn't happened until the end of March, so I'm not quite sure. I think I was just exhausted from making the coat. And then there was all the uncertainty and the anxiety of what was going on around us and just couldn't find any motivation. April, um, things picked up in April. I started off with the True Bias shorts and um, these were the Emerson shorts in Jersey. Now it's not designed for Jersey, but I thought I would give it a go because I was doing PE with Joe every morning with the kids as they were doing homeschool so the schools were shut and I needed something to work out in. So I tried it, I did shorten the crotch. I had done a tr uh, muslin in denim, but I tried it in Jersey and they, they were pretty ugly by the time I'd been washed a few times, but I literally just wore them in my living room to do some keep fit. And so they did the job, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend that pattern for Jersey. I then made a plain tame tee, which is the free pattern by Zero and Doe. I made several of these this year and stretchy items is a bit of a theme and it's an easy to make for this time of year. Next up, we have Simplicity 2058, which is a skirt from the Amazing Fit range. And I made it in a cotton lawn. I thought it was supposed to be a viscose, but it was a lawn, so it was quite stiff. The waist was just really big. I found the proportions really big on this skirt. And later on, I did make the shorter version and I had the same issue with that as well. So it wasn't a great one to fit as you go because of the various panels and things. And then you make it up and then realize I put the zip and I was like, mm. So although the long length kept the sun off my legs in the summertime, I just felt it made me look really short. I no longer have this skirt. I donate it to the textile recycling center because the charity shops were all closed. Nowhere was taking donations. And then when eventually later in the year when they did take donations, 
it was very specific times and only a few shops were doing it so I'm afraid it went um let's have a look where am I up to next up was McCall's 7889 this was made from a viscose fabric and that was um kindly given to me at Christmas time like 2019 by Anna from You Got Me In Stitches and I didn't realize that she was going to send me anything so it was a really nice surprise so I wanted to do something different with it and then I saw this pattern I did muslin it first because it came up really big and the armholes on this pattern are huge so I did reduce it by like two inches and it's still quite big it's quite a, it's a nice shape to it from the distance but I wouldn't necessarily recommend that pattern there are better ones out there I then made Simplicity 8014 which is a shirt dress and I have had this fabric for a while now after seeing a TV presenter Kirsty Allsop had a shirt dress in this fabric. I wanted to recreate it but it only had like two meters. So I made this Simplicity dress pattern. It is too short, it's just too short, it's too thin, it's too short and it's not the kind of thing you could wear over something because I feel that it's too pale. So although I got the fit right, it, it wasn't great but I did come back later in the year to revise and do a longer length skirt pattern which I will come to soon. Then we're into May and at some point, I can't remember when, round about now, my sewing machine broke and I can't remember what exactly month without looking at it. So I bought a new sewing machine because nowhere was open for me to get that one fixed and I felt that that was my escape, that was my release where I could get enjoyment from being indoors all the time is by doing sewing and when the sewing machine broke I didn't know what to do so my husband said just go and order one so I ordered it online through a local shop to me actually and they had an X demonstration model with £100 off it and that was the brother um, F420 which later became completely sold out everywhere and there were like waiting lists to get it. I don't love it. A few months on I, I don't really love it and that might just be because I never actually try it out in person before buying the machine but that is the sort of gamble you take if you can't get it in person ordering it online. It, it just pales into insignificance when I compare it to my vintage Singer 201k. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked here, so let's get back on track. So May 2020, I started off with the Diana top by Style Art. I made two of these. One, um, I can't, oh yes, I'm just trying to think what I've got on camera to show you. One was in a sort of peach skinny type fabric. That was ordered online, that was a remnant. It was it was not great, I didn't like wearing it, it clung, it was just too tight, that did not get worn at all apart from to the camera and the other one was actually in and that was a stretch, that was a stretch woven or something, that, that was a stretch fabric but it just wasn't great but then I had um, a spare piece of Roma, Ponte Roma and that was really too thick so I need a combination of the two. The v-neck looks fine but they don't give you any drafting instructions for a neckband and so you just have to like fold under. Um, yeah, it's not great. Oh, I did make a pink polka dot one which you would have seen with the Jersey Emerson shorts. So I made three of those in total, neither of which are great and that is just down to bad pattern drafting. So let's move on. So it's Simplicity 2058 and this is the green and black skirt. So it's the same pattern as the blue and white skirt but this is the shorter length. Again I had the same issues with it being too big at the waist despite double checking all the finished measurements and everything else. It just it just fell too big so again I don't have that one either so that one has gone as well. I then made the Astaire by French Navy Now patterns. This was quite a good pattern. It does have side splits which I closed up because I have made this pattern before and I found that it drapes and hangs nicer when it's sewn all the way down and I didn't then put, it includes like a big chunky hem which you then as a side split but I just sewed up the side seams all the way down and then just hemmed it normally. It's in a really dodgy fabric that I bought off eBay and you'll see that the pattern is kind of like slanting off to one side but that's eBay for you, isn't it? Um, right, next up is the Miette skirt and I and this is by Tilly and the Buttons and I made this one in a plain viscose, navy viscose fabric. Now these were panic items I made because the schools have been shut and there was rumour that the schools are going to open again before the summer holidays and 
I'd put on weight and I had nothing to wear. So I quickly, I was in a bit of a panic that I needed to wear something. And with the Miette skirt, it is a tie waist and so it's adjustable. So I thought that was great. And it looks good and it has a good drape to it, but it creases like nobody's business. So it's, it's not the greatest fabric to make it in. It's not a suggestive fabric. It does look nice, but at the moment you sit down, forget it, it's just creased up completely. I had I made two more things in May. One was New Look 6614, which is a dress with waist ties. Now this is the only, I would class as only summer dress that I made this year, um, mainly because I wasn't going anywhere. And so in the summertime, I just wore dresses that I'd made in previous summers, which perhaps a bit faded, maybe weren't looking that great, but I was just sitting in my garden, so I didn't want to spend lots of fabric money on fabric but this one I already had the viscose fabric I'd had it for about a year and um, it has the waist ties so it's nice and loose but then you can cinch in at the waist and I would really recommend wearing this with a strapless bra which is what I did because those straps that would be really hard to line up to actually cover a bra strap but other than that it was quite a good pattern Right, we're now into June. Oh, and I'm sorry, I've missed it out. I made another plain tain tea by Deer and Doe. I think that's the red and black one from the top of my head. So June, I made two pairs of the Emerson shorts, um, this time in a woven fabric. One was a navy linen, which stretched and bagged out and just looked, I had sacky bum. So after I wore it a few times, it wasn't a good look. And my problem with this pattern is that because it's flat at the front and elasticated at the back, the difference between my waist and hips is about 10 inches. And so you need to make that well, the waist big enough to get over your hips. So you end up with then quite a lot of excess fabric and then all bulked out at the back. So I think that the best fit for me and anyone else who has that same kind of body proportion is to have a zip fly with elastic at the back because that uh, the elastic allows for any kind of fluctuating weight and the zip fly enables you to get it on you don't need as much elastic at the back so i will be working on a pattern finding a pattern to make some so oh and the other pair were made in a cotton poplin which had been in my stash for ages and it's one of those early on fabrics when i'd started sewing didn't want to make into anything because it was like a print and looked a bit strange but actually that kind of fabric was more suited because it didn't stretch out and it fitted fine. But again, it's just too, too much bulk at the back. I made another plain tain tee, which is the blue and white stripe one. These are all viscose fabrics, so they have a nice drape to them. Um, it's fine, I did, make, I did make more of these, but in the coming year, I will be moving on to a different pattern because I'm just a bit, I just want a different shape to it. Next up, I bought the Sew Over It brought out, Sew Over It Patterns brought out an ebook of patterns for the summer called Summer Dreaming Wardrobe, Capsule Wardrobe. And so I splashed out and I treated myself and I paid for the printing to be done as well so I didn't have to print it at home. So when it arrived, I mean it cost quite a bit because the, although there was a discount on the patterns, I had paid for printing, it cost quite a lot so I have made quite a few of the items because I'm a cheapskate and I like to get my money's worth so I wanted to make as much as I could. So I started off with the white Ravello top which is in here in a viscose fabric. It's really short, really short. It's like a crop top. Not quite short enough for a crop top but every review I've said everyone's gone oh it's really short and it is. It's not something I feel comfortable in but I do think that worn over a black, a black, perhaps a little strappy black dress, like jersey dress, with that over the top, that could just cover up the shoulders and really dress up the outfit, but I'm yet to get the dress for that. Then I made a yellow um, skirt, and this is the Alba skirt, and this is in a viscose. Again, I clearly didn't realise at that point that plain viscose is just going to show up every crease mark, but when I hung this fabric out and I pre-washed it, all the green fly, all the bugs landed on it on the washing line. And I just thought, do I really want to wear that? But it was really see-through. So I made it to test the size and it was too long. So I knew that for the next version, I was going to do a pattern fabric and I was going to shorten it. But again, it's tie weighted, it's adjustable waist. It's just perfect for this year. Right, going on to, to July, we are up to May 22, I think we are up to now, which is the patterned Alba skirt. And this is in a viscose. Um, the petal leaf print and this is one of the most warm items over the summer because it 
it just went with all sorts. You could wear it with a t-shirt, strappy top. It was just nice and light and airy. And because it was patterned, it, you know, it wasn't see-through, it was quite discreet. And it had that just white waist ties. It wasn't too tight. I would really recommend it, but unfortunately you can't buy just that one pattern. You have to buy that whole capsule wardrobe. Next up was, where are we? Oh, the Ravello dress. So again, from the same capsule wardrobe, this was made in a viscose fabric and it has bias binding, which goes all the way around and that's how you finish it off. I loved it. It was just nice and airy. It was quite dressed up. We met, had like a socially distanced um, sort of picnic with work colleagues in the summer before we went back to school. And I felt sort of dressed to the occasion. It was absolutely boiling hot afternoon. And it, it was re a really good dress, a really good make. So I would definitely make more of these next summer and yeah, really well worth that, getting that wardrobe for. Number 24 is the Sally Jumpsuit by Closet Core Patterns. They changed their name this year from Closet Case to Closet Core. This was made in a jersey. I think it's a cotton jersey. I've only worn this twice. I think it's twice this year. Um, just because it was quite a heavier jersey and it's it's a tricky one to know weather-wise when to wear it because when it's really hot you don't want something which is just on you all the time and then when it's colder you haven't got the sleeves and the back's a bit open so um, I think it would look nice with a denim jacket dressed up but obviously we haven't really been anywhere so I wore it to my son's birthday in our dining room but I really enjoyed the pattern the instructions could have been better for my liking um, and it's really short-waisted so I'm short-waisted I did not have to shorten this and if you are longer in the torso you may struggle and you may find that you do need to add length in there because I didn't have to make much adjustment at all and I'm five foot three and short-waisted so just so you know the proportions on that one. Next up is the Porto trousers from the Sew Over at Capsule Wardrobe. They're really big really but so they have an elastic casing and a drawstring they're just huge on the waist and at the front crotch, front crotch area where your sort of tummy is there was loads of excess fabric and just too big and I just felt kind of like frumpy trousers so I did shorten them because they were a funny length so I made them more cropped but I've seen other people as well review that on the one so I won't be returning to that trouser pattern so I wouldn't recommend that one. Next up is something which has been two years in the making and that is a pair of thermal lined curtains. Now where I'm sitting now is our conservatory which is our sewing room and the previous people knocked through the wall into our dining room so it's all open and which is fine in the summertime but in the winter time in the evenings all the heat from the house just escapes. So we had some curtains hung up across like the doorway um, they were really scruffy. I got them for like a pound off eBay. They were new at the time, but they were just thinly lined, didn't match anything, just looked awful. And I bought this fabric two years ago, and then I bought the lining fabric a year ago. And one of my work colleagues just texted me, he was like, what are you up to? Have you made those curtains yet? You've got time to do it. We're not at school. And I was like, okay. So I watched the tutorial, which is by Lauren from Guthrie and Garney over on YouTube. She's done a video for the National Trust about how to make thermal line curtains. And I watched each one about 50 times. And then I realized that I'd only bought enough fabric to make eyelet curtains. And halfway through, I realized I was following the tutorial for pencil plea curtains. So I had to change it. So the gathers are not as big as what I should, they should be. And the patterns actually printed wonky on the fabric. So it's driving me nuts. When they are drawn together, I don't really like them, but I've made them and they do the job. And I feel like I'm gonna see, sorry, I'm just sneezing. The leaf pattern is not com printed completely straight across the fabric and it drove me nuts. So I'm not in a rush to make another pair and they worked out quite expensive, but they keep us nice and warm. They cut match in with the tablecloth and the chairs. And so they are staying for now. I've just realised that I'm only up to make 27 um, and so I'm going to speed it up a bit and do less waffle. Oh, you're just going to be fed up of listening to me. I made some cushion covers and I saw um, Cara from So So Mad. She reviewed a company over in India for Indian fabrics called Itokri Fabrics and she she bought from them and they had um, nice colours and I wanted some vibrant colour cushions because we'd redecorated our living room, got rid of the teal colour wall and painted it all white so I wanted pops of colour. I'd also been watching Lisa Comfort with her sew-alongs and being at home and seeing 
her living room and things and I was sort of influenced by that. So I made some cushion covers um, in the Indian fabric. Next up is Vogue 1595, which is a black dress in a, it's like a polyester-y jersey. And I had this in my stash and it was really just to kind of try out the fit, which is okay. I did have to take in more at the darts, in the back darts because it sort of, it didn't hang right. Um, I haven't worn this because I, the intention was I was going to wear it for work. And then when I went back to work, all the windows and things have to be open for air circulating through and it's really cold. And because you've got big sleeves on the dress, you can't wear a cardigan over it. So I'm not sure. I mean, I could make it in another fabric, but I'm not in a rush because it's not practical and you know, I'm not gonna wear it around the house because it's too dressy. And where I would dress up more smart at work, it's not practical because I need something warm on. So although I was quite pleased, it's quite an easy dress and I have done a video about how I did pattern tissue fitting with that. Um, that's on the back burner for when I can have more appropriate time to wear that. Next up is Simplicity 8014, which is a which is the longer version of the shirt dress I did back in whenever it was, which was to the Kirsty Allsop dress. So this one was a the different skirt option on it. It was for Minerva, one of their blog posts, and so they provided the fabric, and so I wanted more of a fuller skirt. I'm just not sure if it's frumpy on me or not. I mean, the, the print is okay, it's just the general look of it. The good thing to come out of it was that I had like quite a bit of leftover fabric, which I made face masks with, and they're really nice, because it's a cotton sateen, and um, they're quite breathable, and they're quite com nice and smooth against your face, so if you want to make face masks, that's a good fabric to um, to use. Moving on, make number 30 is the Charlotte Can Pocket Tea. I had never heard of this. I found it on the fold line one late late one night and thought, yes, I wanna make that up. So it has kimono type sleeves. It's super long, it's ridiculously long. So I think I did shorten it because I didn't have enough fabric because it calls 1.75 meters and I think I had 1.5, but I would definitely shorten it. And it's too loose on the top. So I need to kind of adjust that, but I have worn that tucked into trousers at work and it's a really smart loose top. So that has been worn quite a few times, but I just need to somehow take some excess out from the top here and I will definitely make that again. I then tried the Laura Pants by Tazuti Patterns, my quest to make trousers, which was a bit of a fail. They, they went down at the front, down at the back, and um, there's no pockets on them, it drove me nuts. And they were elasticated all the way around. I do realize I need to do a full seat adjustment. That's probably what I need to do. And I think I did do that on them, but it just wasn't enough. So I, that's something I, just, I still haven't mastered. So hopefully 2021, year of the trousers, never know. Um, I then made the Sally dress. So I'd made the Sally jumpsuit by Closet Core and then made the Sally dress, which was a fail. And it doesn't look like a fail in this shot but it is because the, when I use the overlocker to finish off the waistband and attaching it, it caught the lining, but it didn't catch the outside bodice. So it then popped up and you could see visibly see white elastic, I don't know, only black elastic. You could see white elastic on the outside of the garment and you couldn't unpick the overlocking to then re-stitch the waist, it's hard to explain, so I will put a link to the video down below, but I definitely want to make one next year and I will do that on my sewing machine, not my overlocker, so I can actually wear it. Oh, and the last make of August was a horrendous fail and um, it makes me look pregnant. I'm not pregnant, I'm just, I had, you know, lots to eat. That was it, really. So it was my take on a dress, which I thought, yes, I can easily do that myself. The top half was the Kitchy Coo Lady Skater dress, way too tight and small. And then I just kind of drew a triangle and thought that will do for the skirt. And there's no excess in this whatsoever. So I did feel like a sausage in a skin, but I've included it in my makes because I'm including the fails as well. And you know, that's what sewing's all about. It's not all successes. So moving on to September, which I didn't make that much, but my most warm make of the year is something I made in September, which is the I Am Jack's Raincoat by I Am Patterns. 
I absolutely love this coat. I bought, uh, I think it was seven ounce PU waterproof fabric from Textile Express for this, and it's waterproof. It's not shower proof, it is waterproof. It's really heavy duty. And the pattern suggests using a ballpoint needle, which I did, and there was times when I had to unpick, and I haven't had the water come through even when I've had to unpick. It was like, it hasn't left a hole. It's really strange. I lined it with a fabric that, some polyester fabric I had in one of these drawers from ages ago and um, it works quite well. There, it's nice roomy coat, you can put a nice thick jumper on it and it's really waterproof and it just, and it looks impressive because it has all the, like the poppers and the snaps and the metal zip and it's like, yes, I've made this. It doesn't look like I've made it either. After making this, because I used a hammer and like the snaps, I went on to, you can see the handle just poking out there. I did buy a green hand press, which I wish I'd bought before, but, you live and learn. So these were all inserted with the hammer. So you don't need any fancy gadgets if you're looking to buy this. And it was really enjoyable to make. Next I had two fails and this is the Crafty So and So Simple Tea and it's a free pattern, but obviously I've paid for the fabric. And um, I then made it in white and a blue and white stripe. And the neckband, I just feel the neckband is drafted too small and it's just gathering it all in and it's just, it's not a good look, so I won't, it's a shame because the actual shape of the t-shirt is really nice. Nice length, nice shape, but it's that neckband. And I can't be bothered to be drafting my own neckbands on a pattern that I've had to print out at home, if you know what I mean. So we are now on to October and Make 37, which is the Gemma sweater by Named Patterns. I was experimenting with color, and so I don't think this green is particularly my colour but I thought I'd be a bit more bold in my choices. The neck band piece doesn't, it kind of flops down, a bit like the toaster sort of trying to make back in January, it doesn't sit up, there's no interfacing or anything else, it just kind of flops down and I think that it's too short for me and the points of the shape, they were really tricky to line up and I had to unpick and then I got a couple of holes in it so um, yeah, for my body proportions, it sits and then makes my backside look really big, I think. So, mm, maybe lengthen it, or if you don't have my, if you're slimmer on the hips, then it's probably more suited to you. I then made the Ellie and Mac, which is my first time making an Ellie and Mac pattern, around the block hoodie for my daughter. And so I, I did it all on my sewing machine because I couldn't figure out at that point what I have now, how to use my overlocker for just sewing stuff without it being too tight. And then I realized I had to change the tension. So it took me ages to piece it together because there's this nice sort of stripe going through it. She tried it on and I made, she's nine and I made the age 12 size and she just said, it's not baggy and it fits her. So that's an indication of the sizing. My daughter is just like an average size nine year old. She's actually probably smaller than some of the um, kids in her class, but it's not great. So don't make it thinking that it's gonna fit a 12 year old because unless you've got a really small 12 year old, it's probably not going to. Um, I then made two Simplicity Jumpers 8529, which is the one I made back in January. The first one I lengthened by four inches and I color blocked it with all the leftover um, jerseys and things that I've been using. But I did the, I was in a rush and I did the neck band on the overlocker and it gathered it and it was, it just really ruined the look of the garment. So the next one I made, which is in the pink blossom fleecy fabric, I only lengthened it by two inches and I took my time with it and it's nice and flat on the neckband. It's super cozy to wear. I do think it probably needs to be a bit tighter at the bottom. So it, this, it feels like, it, at the moment there's no stretch to it. It literally just hangs down. And I think a sweatshirt should sort of like sit in a bit snugly. Um, so that may be an alteration I'll make, but I really like the pattern and the fabric on that one. Then I made the Avent Seamstress, the blouse, and this was in a plain viscose. Again, my issue with plain viscose, and it creases like mad, but I really like this one. It's a nice loose pattern, um, loose fitting blouse, elasticated on the cuffs, which I think from the video, you'll see it's slightly twisted on the cuff. Um, the buttons have sometimes come undone when I've wore it, uh, worn it, and that's because it's a viscose. So I think I may, I think there's probably room for me to be able to get it on and off. I may just stitch a couple of those buttons down. I've been meaning to make this pattern again for a well, since I've made this one, and I still haven't. I do have the fabric for it, but I'm just, I don't know what I'm waiting for. 
but that will happen. It's a really good pattern. I did a narrow shoulder adjustment on that one and I think that was about the only adjustment that I made, but really good instructions on that one as well. Next up is Make 42, it's the Sorrento denim jacket, which is going back to the Sew Over It capsule wardrobe. I made this all on my vintage sewing machine, the Singer 201K, and it was really good to sew with, but the only issue I had was the top stitching because I tried top stitching, I bought top stitching thread and didn't realise that I needed a top stitching specific needle. So it was just unpick, it was just put, you could pull the threads off it. And once I realised and I bought one of these needles, it went in a lot better. I would advise if you're making something like this and you have more than one machine, if you have more than one machine, have one set up with top stitching thread and one set, set up with regular thread because although they try and group the stages together in the pattern, there are quite a lot of times where you literally top stitch something, then have to take out everything and then put the regular thread in and then change your needle back again and then sew some seams together, then put it all back into top stitch. So if you had two machines on the go, not everybody does. And I could have done this, I didn't think, since I was literally just changing needles and thread every five minutes. That would be a really good thing. Um, but yeah, that was, I, and I've worn that quite a lot as well. And I do need to press the collar. I keep forgetting every time I see a photo, I'm like, why have I not pressed the collar properly? Um, next up was the Nina Lee Q skirt. I didn't like this at all. It was a rushed make for a Minerva make. And I'm not in a hurry to make this one again. That's all I'm gonna say on that one. Um, next up is McCall's 8056, which is an Irish, Irish? Iris pajamas and they were made in Liberty fabric and that was gifted to me from Minerva for a blog post so I have put details on photos over now I'll link that down to link to there if you want to go and check it out it's quite a big pattern so there's quite a lot of room but I made this in the intention of summer pajamas the the shorts I feel they need an adjustment or something at the back but just to wear as pajamas around the house in the summer when it's baking hot they'll do the job I made another plain tame tee, which um, has obviously been my favourite t-shirt to date this year. In November, moving on to November, we're getting there, number 46, I made the Vogue V9133 blazer pattern and I turned it into a wool coat. Oh, the, the, the fabric was given to me by Minerva in exchange for a blog post and I did put a horsehair canvas in it and I, so I hand sewed that in, but I don't know, it just, my husband said it looks like something from the 1980s and because there's like a stripe to it I think because it's like a grey blazer and so it just I just don't feel that it's me I don't feel that you know it's particularly great colour on me or shape on me or anything else but I just wanted to see how it would fit and I think it looks better undone than it does done up I'm in the video footage I'm showing you I had pressed it as much as I could using a clapper and my iron but I then did take it to the drying cleaner so I'll pop a quick I did a quick selfie and you'll see how flat the lapels sit after being professionally pressed so I would recommend that if you're making a wool coat to take it to the dry cleaners after you've made it it only cost me eight pounds and it was done the same day and I got it back and it was they pressed all the hem they used sort of I sort of said where I wanted it pressed and the lapels, the hems, the cuffs, everything was pressed so nice and so flat and I would not have been able to get that finished myself because I tried and I didn't want to scorch the fabric. So that was just a quick tip. In December, right nearing the end here, um, I made some gifts for work colleagues. I had a tote bag which I started on last year. Um, so I just cut the rest of the cork fabric, sewed that together using an edge stitching foot and it was so easy on my machine and just so I sewed the two pieces of the cork together to make it into the handles, finished off the lining fabric and that was done for that one. I did face masks with a leftover Liberty fabric for another colleague using the 3D face mask and, um, and then I had some all Achille fabric which I'd bought to make cushions with when I'd bought the curtain fabric, never made them. So I made two tote bags. One was quite big and one was a slimmer shopper. I've only got a picture of one of these. I've made quite a lot of general face masks this year for myself, for us all in the household as well. My son, when he went back to school in September, they were told, maybe it wasn't September, perhaps it was after half term. At some point mid term, he was told that he had to wear a face mask in a, they had to be a single color. So I've made some, 
he's lost some I've had to make some more I will need to make some more because you know what kids are like stuff them in the pocket oh lost them and then that's it you're a bit stuck so I wear a mask most of the time when I'm at work just so I'm not breathing the cleaning chemicals that I'm having to use and any time I'm near any kid it's like keep the distance and have a mask on so I get through quite a lot so I will probably be making some more of those soon because I will need them going back to work moving on from that is this which is make number 51 which is Tilly and the Buttons Coco's top which I haven't taken any footage of so this is my footage now this is um, navy stripe with the yellow I found it to be really big I sized up because I printed it out years ago actually I've got a video on it and I printed it out and I just thought no that's too small so I printed a bigger size and I tried look can you see it doesn't cover my bra strap which is really annoying because I had thought I'd narrowed the gap I took it in by like half an inch on either side but I think all it's done is dropped it down so yeah it's too wide but um I wore this on Christmas day it's quite a nice fit but it's just the neckline drives me nuts on that one um and the other thing I made which I made finished yesterday actually is by I am patterns and it's the I am Julie skirt and it's an asymmetric skirt and I made it in a needle cord let me just go and grab it now this is navy but this is a black skirt so it's just so you can see and it re it's really hard to photograph isn't it with black but it is I think it's you know it's quite a nice it's quite a good shape on it and it is tie waisted so you've got the tie and then there's a button there so I'm all about adjustable waist this year and I'm sure I'm not the only person but the way it sits um, let me just pan down can you see so it goes like there so it's that asymmetric look and this is the longer length version because there is a shorter one but it, I thought it was too short so I've made this thinking I can wear this to go back to work in pair of tights, pair of shoes and um, you know it's quite smart or it can be like smart casual so I would recommend it the only thing is um, I'm probably on the walk now if you haven't made a waistband before and you want to follow these instructions they're really confusing when it comes to the waistband so I some of it I just kind of guessed on what bit goes where um, they weren't that clear they were quite confusing so that's the only thing to bear in mind other than that I actually did something strange so I did a bigger size on the waist than I did the hips so I actually graded down which I'd never do I always grade out at the hips because that's where I am but I went off the finished measurements and I just didn't want it too tight so although you put the button in yourself you know I probably could have like done a smaller size but I wanted it nice and roomy and then obviously um, if I lose weight I can change the button on that and then just tighten it up a bit more with the with the tie but I, re I really like the pattern the other thing one thing I would bear in mind it has a facing it has a facing which goes from one side to the other and the thing with facings is they do roll out and it didn't give me a nice flat line on the on the edge so I put some catch stitches in just to hold that flat so it's disguised because of the nap of the fabric on the needle cord but if you're using just a cotton and you had to put those stitches in it probably would be visible not on a pattern fabric but if you're doing it on a plain cotton you would then see if you had put individual stitches in so it might be worth then figuring out how to do like a full lining instead but that's it I did make Christmas cushion covers that's the one thing that I forgot um, I've made that and then that is everything they are all my makes for 2020 I appreciate everyone who has watched and followed along on both Instagram on my stories when I've updated my progress makes and I have saved a few highlights particularly um, coat making and curtain making so there's more involved makes I do then post updates and I try and do like a progress so feel free to follow me over on there if you haven't subscribed already please hit that subscribe button thank you so much for all your support this year and I hope that it, they just inspire you to try a few patterns try a few styles and see for yourself 
and what you can make and if you want to make the same patterns or if you have recommendations you think that I should try then please put a comment down below please post a comment down below of what is your favorite make that you've made this year the one thing you're most proud of and we can all then connect on and encourage each other so thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in 2021